The Nintendo Switch has never been in short supply of controller options, and it is a list that is still continuing to just keep growing and growing and growing. And a specific theme that I've been seeing a lot lately is smaller controllers. Controllers that are focused on either being something that are more accessible for people with smaller hands, or you have kids that want to play, or even something you just want to have be very portable. So I want to take a look at some of the older ones that have come out, some of the new ones that have been released, and really see which one is the best, or at least which one best fits your needs. And one of the first options I want to take a look at is one of the newer controllers to come from Hori, the Hori Pad Mini for the Nintendo Switch. Now, something that immediately sets this one apart from everything else on today's list is that this is a wired controller, as you can tell. It is a hardwired one in, you cannot unplug this, it's just always going to have this wire coming out of it. The upside of this is, of course, it makes it for a cheaper controller, but obviously the trade-off is, it's not wireless. It's also worth noting that this is a somewhat bare-bones, lightweight controller option in terms of special features. It doesn't have rumble, it doesn't have motion controls, or anything readers. However, because it is a Hori controller, it does of course make room to have a turbo button when you need to have those rapid fire presses. As far as how the controller itself feels and handles, the shoulder buttons on it I'm not a huge fan of. They're not terrible, but they're okay. I like the front facing buttons. The sticks in terms of tension and everything feels good, and the d-pad is solid, but something about the plastic the sticks are made out of and the shape of the stick head, it feels like my thumbs really want to slide off these stick heads. It hasn't actually happened. I've been able to kind of keep myself in check enough that while I play, my thumbs stay nice and rooted on the sticks. But it just feels like, especially if you're someone who's a little more intense of a player, if you're really kind of banging the sticks in a direction, that you might end up sliding off and losing control. Now, as far as the whole small aspect of this controller goes, it does walk that kind of midpoint of being something that has slightly curved handle grips, but still has that kind of retro controller design where it's mostly just the size of what you need for for the sticks and buttons. Overall, I actually really like it. I think it works a pretty nice midpoint where it's still pretty comfortable for medium sized hands as well as small sized ones. I think this is a solid pickup, especially for kids. It is one of the cheaper options as far as a licensed controller goes, though you can get cheaper if we're going the unlicensed route, which a couple controllers we're gonna talk about are there as well. If we're gonna talk about some really cheap options out there that you can find that are unlicensed, something that I reviewed recently in a dedicated video is this Nook-style controller from Stoga. Now, the thing about this particular unlicensed controller is you're going to see a lot of controllers on the internet that look like this one, aside from the color scheme, but come from about 20 different companies, especially on Amazon. Now the reason for this is because a lot of them are sourcing parts from similar companies, and so I mostly want to focus on how this controller feels as far as the grip and size goes. Now the main thing about this controller that's really interesting compared to a lot of the other controllers on this list is that it is literally a small controller. What I mean by that is that in the case of a lot of these other controllers, they're kind of the retro style where it just doesn't have the handle grips, it's something that's a little smaller, and so it ends up walking this kind of line of working for medium and small hands, whereas this is a controller that still keeps the shaping of a traditional pro controller, but just scaled down to where it ends up being a lot more comfortable for small hands. The trade-off of this is that if you do not have small hands, this will be very uncomfortable over time. I was actually surprised by how long I was able to play with this before the uncomfort really started to settle in, but it did definitely happen. Whereas someone who has smaller hands will find this to be a very comfortable option. Now, because this is an unlicensed controller, it does end up coming in a lot cheaper than a lot of other competition. It's more than the Hori Pad, but that's also because the Hori Pad is wired. This one in particular went for 40 bucks, which is still considerably cheaper than a lot of other wireless options out there. And that's for the Stoga specifically. I have seen some of these other ones that show up on Amazon list for even cheaper. Overall, this particular one has been a really solid controller, and I think there's a lot of other ones out there that still have that same comfort as far as the grips go. But again, as far as buttons and stick quality, additional features go, that's gonna vary with which particular manufacturer you buy from. Now to keep the unlicensed train going, but with a company that I think has a little more prestige and is a little more well known, is 8 Doe. Now they do have their SN30 controllers, which the retro style ones certainly kind of fit the bill a little bit for being a kind of smaller controller, but the ones that really sell the concept of being very small are their Switch light pads. Now, this is definitely one of the more unique controllers on this list because, as you can tell, it doesn't have any sticks at all. Instead, it opts for having D-pads instead of sticks, and then has a four-button setup for what would normally be the D-pad on a Pro Controller and, of course, the ABXY. Now, the downside of this is pretty obvious. You don't have sticks, which makes it a very awkward controller to use for anything that relies on dual-stick inputs. If you're playing anything like, say, Zelda Breath of the Wild or any kind of first-person view game, this isn't necessarily going to be a great choice because you don't have any stick sensitivity. You're just either pressing the 
D-pad or you're not. However, for any kind of game where stick sensitivity doesn't matter, especially a lot of retro games, platformers, that kind of stuff, this is actually a pretty cool, awesome controller. What's really great about this is that because it is a fully flat surface without sticks, it's a very easy controller to fit in your pocket. As far as portability goes, this is one of the best options out there. The button quality on this one is solid, although I will say I'm not a super huge fan of the shoulders on this one as well, in particular just because of the way they wanted to keep this thin body design. Instead of having, you know, front and back triggers, you have these ones and the inner ones. I just don't really love that, but it's a sacrifice in the name of making it more portable. And because this is an 8-bit dough controller, while it's primarily marketed for the Switch, in particular the Switch Lite, because obviously color scheme, this will also work on a number of other devices as it works like just a wireless Bluetooth controller. So you can also use it on Mac, PC, and Android. Android. This is a great little pickup and is super cheap for being a wireless controller at 25 bucks. Now while we're on the subject of 8-bit dough, another controller they make that isn't really like the rest on this list, but when we're talking about small controllers, I feel like I have to dedicate at least a little time to it, is the Zero 2. This is one of the smallest fully functional wireless controllers I have ever used on the Switch. It is not exactly something you're going to want to use for serious play, but for the sheer concept of being a super tiny functional controller, I love it. Now, of course, this is not a fully functional controller. This is more along the lines of using a Joy-Con sideways where you just have the pair of shoulder buttons, the ABXY, a single D-pad, and the two buttons in the center for plus and minus. It gets the job done for very simple games, and I think there is an actual cool selling point to this of if you bought a full set of them, you have a completely mobile four-player setup for certain games, but that is definitely a very specific use case. At 20 bucks, it's pretty expensive for what you're getting. I think it's a lot more worth spending five more dollars to get the Switch Lite Pad or maybe even more money on one of their SN30s. But in general, just for the kind of cool concept and emphasizing the fact that this is a very teeny tiny controller, I just had to talk about it. Now, another brand new controller on this list that has just recently been released comes from PDP, which is their very aptly named little wireless controller for the Switch. Now, of the controllers on this list, this is actually the most expensive one at 50 bucks, and I think one of the main things that really sells this one in particular is that it's just a really good all-rounder. The Apido controllers are very specialized, the Horiped Mini is a wired design, and the Nook controller, at least for its specific one, is a cool unlicensed design, but people don't necessarily always want to rely on unlicensed choices because there's some long-term support issues that can potentially come up. So with PDP's licensed option, this is a nice wireless controller that gets the job done on pretty much all main fronts. Like with the HoriPad Mini, this is a more retro-inspired design. It's clearly influenced by the SNES controller, though it is noticeably a bit thicker. But because of this approach, it is something that ends up working for both smaller and medium-sized hands. Button quality overall on it is pretty solid. I do like the sticks on it. The stick heads themselves are a little awkward feeling at first, but they are nice and grippy, which is the most important part. The only thing in particular that bothers me a little bit on this controller is the D-pad. If you really like using a D-pad in any kind of retro style games, that's just your primary way of controlling a game, I'm not sold on this being a super strong choice. Now, because of this one's particular shaping, one of the additional selling points to this one is that like with the 8-bit dose Switch Lite controller, you can fit this in your pocket. It's a little more awkward with the stick heads, admittedly, but if you like the idea of something that you can just easily bring around with you, this is a very super portable one. When it comes to additional special features, it has one out of the three main things that are normally associated with a Switch Pro controller. It does not have an NFC reader, it does not have rumble, but it does have motion controls, which I would argue is probably the most important of the three, especially depending on the kind of games you like to play. For instance, something like Breath of the Wild, you need to have motion controls for some specific instances, so that's nice to have. I do kind of wish it had rumble a little bit, but it's not a deal breaker. Again, I think all the controllers we talked about today have their individual strengths and kind of specific situations. The HoriPad Mini is a good wired approach, especially for kids. The Switch Lite controller from 8-Bit Doe is an awesome portable one and is great for retro games, but again, anything that relies on dual stick inputs, don't use it. And the Stoka controller, I think, is probably one of the best wireless options out there as far as someone who just wants a dedicated controller designed for smaller hands. Where the PDP wireless controller really stands amongst all that is, I think this is the solid all-rounder. It works for small hands, it works for medium hands, it's a wireless option, it still has motion controls, and it's something that can fit in your pocket. It just kind of hits all the little check marks. I think there's specific areas where these other controllers excel, but as far as just a good one-size-fits-all approach, this is a good one to pick up. If any of these caught your eye, I will have all these controllers listed down below. I think some of them are currently sold out, so it's a little rough to grab a hold of, but just keep your eyes open and they will open a backup eventually. 